gee, I wish this airplane had less horsepower, said no <laughs> pilot ever. So this is the 26 inch wheels. That's correct. And the spring steel gear. Uh, aluminum spring. Oh, spring aluminum. Uh, excuse me, aluminum, spring aluminum. A little gear. lighter, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. 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 Is your uh, fence there? You yeah, that's around. good. We always like that. Nice panel with G3X touch. And it's traveling in traffic. Um, depending on how this works out, if you are ready to land, we can just hold your midfield. Uh, why don't you go ahead and come in after the uh, box? We'll wait for yeah. you. Ready to go. Attitude is set. My attitude is great. How's your attitude? We're in the, uh, we're outstanding. Okay. We're going to do a right 360 and do a little bit of practice before going, so uh, you got time. Okay. Gotcha. Homedale traffic. Get box 295 pop. Departing 31. Homedale. Okay. And here goes. We'll see what acceleration is like. Oh, yeah. You can feel the difference. <laughs> 20 horsepower makes a big difference. So we've got a five minute time limit on that. And we are climbing really nice and steep. Airframe local lights, what, about 60? 60 is VX. Okay. 65 is VY. And let's see, that looks like about 1,200 feet a minute, 470, yeah. they're about 1,500 feet a minute at 70, 70 miles an hour, very nice. Can't complain about that. Nope, nope, it's all about climb, I mean, when you're dealing with mountain strips. So why don't we go down over by the, where we were uh, scouting, just to take a look. Okay. We got a flaps, retrim it, what's your ticket? Okay, I got the airplane. Thank you. And what do you have for nice cruise power? Um, usually about 32 inches is, is good. Okay. Uh, got the RPM at 5400. We can drop that down to 5350 and kind of settles right in. About 5350 is it? Yep. Okay, 5350 on the RPM. Yeah, as you and I were talking about earlier, I kind of like having the, the blue knob. Yeah. Because you never quite know what the... Uh, things doing otherwise. So being able to dial it right in is precious. So about 32 inches? Yeah. Pretty comfortable. Everything kind of smooths out. Get a yeah, good it does. It does. So 106 miles an hour indicated. 114 true. And we're and still going. Yeah, <laughs> we're accelerating. We're descending just a little bit there. Very nice. So I haven't flown the sport wing for a while. Much more spry than the STI. Okay. STI is pretty locked on. This this makes you feel like you can do just about anything. Yeah, it's really quick. But you don't have quite the low speed stall capability. Correct. The STI is going to beat us on the stall by uh, five to eight miles per hour, depending on you know which engine, how you're configured, all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, so the STI settles in really, really well at that slower speed. Right. So your approach speed is going to be about 8 or 10 miles an hour slower than, than the Super Sport. But the truth is, unless you're doing a stole competition, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. No, that, that's where Heather and I decided to go with the Super Sport. It was simply um, better cross-country performance. You know, I, I'll, take, I'll take the Super Sport anywhere I would take the STI. Right. I but mean, that, that's it, my in, in the bottom in the bottom line, you have to ask yourself just how short of a strip you're going to try and go into. And most people want a backcountry airplane, not a stall competition airplane. Most people. Yeah. You know, we go up to see my mom in northern Idaho, and the difference in the trip is about 20, 25 minutes. Right. Well, it's half hour I get to spend with mom. Sure. Yeah. So what kind of altitude do you usually cruise at if you're going on a cross country more than just, you know, 30 miles? So Heather does uh, does well at higher altitudes where it's smooth and cool. Smooth and cool. Me too. Uh, when we go to Simon, we got terrain that we have to clear at 8,500 feet. I usually go to 10.5. 10.5. And are you just basically cruising in red line with this thing if you want? No. No. That's uh, basically this would be my exact configuration for going up there. Okay. But I would assume that 
the higher you go, the faster you're going to go for a given power setting. And this will maintain the horsepower all the way up to what? 16,000? 16,000? 16, so you're probably going to hit airframe redline if you just set the power and go to altitude, right? <laughs> I assume you've done that testing? I've done that testing, yep, accidentally. Yep. And what's what's airframe redline? 140. 140. Wow. That's miles per hour. Miles per hour. Uh, true or indicated? Indicated? Yeah. Indicated. Indicated. So, wow. Yeah, that's the big beauty of these turbocharged, turbo-normalized engines is that they may not, you know, people might say, gee, it doesn't have the same kind of horsepower as a light bulb. Well, it does once you get above 6,000 feet, and it maintains that all the way up. The visibility is phenomenal. What people forget is not only have you got the overhead greenhouse, but you've got the greenhouse in back. Yep. So it's almost, in this kind of a steep turn, it's almost like flying with a bubble canopy. Yes. Yeah, the, uh, the wings aren't in your way, really. A little bit of the profile. we got a crop duster out there at 12 o'clock. I'm going to keep the turn going. We'll go up here, this little canyon up ahead. So what was your build time, knowing that you're a factory builder, so you... Yeah, technically we were four and a half months. Four and a half months. Um, we were a little longer than that by the by the clock, because we started that video series. Right. Where we started doing our tail feather last year, uh, elevator horizontal. We varnished the wood, we installed the wood, we did the coverings and all that stuff. We started that last summer. Right. And we're just, we took five months to video just that section. Ah. Uh, yeah, when you did, when I've, I've I've experienced that myself in the shop when I'm trying to do photography as well as getting the job done. At some point, you decide I just need to get the get the job done. If somebody wants to come out and take pictures while I'm doing it, that's up to them. Yeah. Yeah. Once once Rotax committed that they could have the motor to us for Oshkosh, we said great. You know, yeah, I, March March 28th we set the clock. And you did uh, task base phase one on this, right? Correct. So when were you able to sign? About how many hours were you able to sign it out of uh, phase one? Uh, we were in probably eight or nine hours. Okay. But that's because you guys have lots and lots of experience with the airframe. Yeah, that's just it. It was consistent with what we do with our SLS80. Okay. Where, you know, yeah, we don't want we don't want the average builder in their garage to think they're going to get their no. phase one done that quick. <laughs> no. well, I'm just uh, enjoying flying this airplane, and I know, I mean, we're cruising along at basically the same kind of power levels you would cruise in the, in the 915, yep. um, but knowing that we'd have the excess power if we wanted to climb. Well, the interesting thing about the, the 916, they call it the impossible engine, right? Right. And we, we couldn't quite figure out why they were calling it that. Well, they're giving us more power, and they're doing it on less fuel. So this right. Is, this is actually burning less fuel than, than if this STI were side-by-side. It was running the same Sure. Setting. So I'm right alongside this little cliff over here, and I'm going to go full power and see it. I'm not going to go over it because I don't want to risk anything, but if I wanted to outclimb that... Oh yeah, that's just that. So we can go right over the top of that. That's that's the kind of thing that power is going to give you. Yeah, this this power plant with the uh, with the MT prop is a tremendous combination. Yeah. I'm going to take it up, get a little bit of altitude, just see how the slow flight is. Sounds good. Okay, we got a couple thousand feet. I'm just going to slow her down. I expect it's going to fly just like a nice kit box. She's pretty docile. Trim is nice and effective. That's set up to go a little faster trip, under 80 miles an hour. So when you're in the pattern, it's tripping quicker. Ah, okay. Fine -tune it out. Got it. Got it. Works pretty well. So this is this is best climb rate. Yep. 70. And it handles just fabulous. So now we'll slow her down some more. More down below flaps so we can bring in a little bit of flaps. What did you say about the first notch of flaps? So right there you're about half notch, half flaps. Right. You go one more, that's where I like full flaps. Got it. Or you have one more notch yet, you go full, full flaps. But I, I generally use that one. Yeah, you know, full, full flaps in most airfoils just give you all drag. Oh, this is what I remember about kit boxes. They're so delightful <laughs> down, down slow. I mean, it just they like it does its thing. Yep. You've got AOA calibrated. I do. Starts to indicate about fifty-six miles an hour. 
Okay. Very nice. Okay. 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 Follow the river, though. Take us all the way back to Homefield. Ah, there we go. Okay. okay, we're up. We're up river. Or down river. Quicker than the STI. Don't tell John I said that. Oh, it is quicker. I mean, the acceleration is just phenomenal. It's like a sports car. It really is. You know, it is. It is. Uh, that's a great way to describe it. I mean, it really is a sports model. It's a sports car. And you know, people are out there arguing about whether they can land in 180 feet or 150 feet. If you're going camping, you're probably not going to be doing that anyways. You're, no, you're looking at yeah, you're looking at something much more reasonable. So um, I always try and emphasize the difference between a, a bush plane and a skull plane. They, they can be the same thing, but they're not necessarily. I'm not going to jump in a race car and go get groceries. I'm not going to go no. see my mom in a race car. Right, right. The track car. Well, this is one extremely beautiful airplane, and the handling is just outstanding. And having that extra power is amazing. So we're taxiing out in the uh, in Brandon's brand new Kit Fox Super Sport with the uh, 916 IS, and we're going to sample just how much power this beast has. Doesn't seem like beast is the right word for an, an airplane as nimble as a Kit Fox, but with this much power, it's going to be awesome. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> so we're waiting at 120 degrees in the oil. Yep, close. That'll be almost there. Drop in. Control, good. Make sure everything's good. It, it operates just like a standard Rotox, right? Lane A, lane B, checking each lane separately, dual fuel pumps. Yep. So, so for, actually, for, the, for the pilot, there's really no difference between this and the 915 or, no. frankly, the 914 or anything else, right? It's the same basic operation. Okay. Even and installation was... was almost on par with uh, the 1915s that we did. Right. And, uh, I mean, more and more pilots are getting used to flying with Rotaxes, so it's really not even that unusual anymore. So now we're going to use the uh, full throttle for takeoff, and we've got five minutes at full throttle, and then we have to bring it back out of that. So, Homefield traffic, get Fox 295 pop departing 31 Homefield. Here we go. Hold on. All righty. Oh, that acceleration is phenomenal. The 915 is awesome, but this is just phenomenal. And we're climbing out at about 60, about 60 VX. Yep, VX, plenty steep. I mean, we're uh, well clear of any trees in the in the vicinity. 1,500 feet a minute. Awesome. 60. Flowing about 13 gallons an hour. Well, that's pretty darn good. No substitute for horsepower, that's for <laughs> sure. I'll never go back. <laughs> You'll never go back. So I got the autopilot on now with okay. the three axes. So Flies it nice. Two axis or three axis? Uh, three axis. Three axis. You got yep. a yaw damper. I do. Wow. <laughs> a three axis autopilot in a kit box. Now, I mean, this is a luxury machine <laughs> that can you can that you can take anywhere you want to take it. That's seems just awesome. Seems excessive, but uh, you know. Yeah. But you know, with the big screen and the small screen, uh, G3X is a perfect match. It gives you everything you need. The right seater's got something they can look at. Home bill traffic, get box by Papa's four to the west. 3,300, landing 31 on bill. Is this a stock glare shield cover? Yep. It's a fiberglass uh, form. Oh, okay. That makes with the fabric that matches yeah. all of our most real design. Yeah. Who does the upholstery? Place over in uh, Boise. Okay. The little mom and pop shop that we've got that we work with. They just do a great job. They did all this custom stuff for us. We, we did the red stitch along the glare shield. Oh, over yeah, the, uh, I like that. Here to match yeah. the top stitch. Normally we have a piping around the seat, so I, I took that out. And okay. The top stitch. Yep. We're sitting on it. You can see a little Denali inspired stripe. You know. <laughs> kind of cool. So I'm going to watch you do a nice landing. So, what kind of speed do you use in the pattern? Uh, generally try a downwind about 65. 65 I, miles an hour on exactly. downwind. Okay. And then as I, uh, yeah, about 65 downwind by the time I get across the uh, numbers, I generally try and be under 60. 
Okay. Right where the five rings. Otherwise, it'll float forever, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Hope Bill traffic hit Fox 5 pop is left down with 3 1 Hope Bill. Okay, so we're still doing 90 as we enter the downwind. Start slowing it up so we can just get, the, get some flaps out. Yeah. I imagine the limiting factor on the flaps is simply how much strength you can put into the lever. <laughs> okay, and our beam the numbers. There's the top of your white arc, about 80 yep. miles an hour. Power back, flaps in. Hold the stick back. Then I just trim to relieve that pressure. Yep. Be descending about 65. Nice 65. Couple turns of prop just to keep it. Have a traffic guy how to get the room. Keep the prop neutral. Sure. Runway two eight seven. Yeah, I imagine you can use an awful lot. Use the prop uh, for drag if you want to with yeah. this constant speed prop. It's a pretty good speed brake for sure. Most airplanes. Home bill traffic to Fox five Papas left base to final three one home bill. Nice little set of trees to make your base, base the <laughs> final turn around. There's no cutting it short. No. Okay, now we want to see that greaser. No pressure. No pressure. Look down the runway. Not a greaser. Sorry. That's yeah, okay. I overcommitted. <laughs> Very nice. So I got to ask you the, the typical question: What would you do differently if you were going to build this again? Anything? I can't think of a single thing. I, you can't think of anything you'd change. Not a thing. I Where's the cup holder? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this will actually hold a Mountain Dew right down here. By there, the ah, there. there you go. That's right. No full flares. That's all. No. So it's just a fabulous airplane, and uh, I can't imagine. I, I I agree with you. I can't think of anything you'd want to change. The, the the you fly the ones with the 915 all the time. Yep. Um, and the 915 is plenty adequate. It's a very, very nice engine. As you pointed out, it's smooth. It's uh, got lots of power. This just gives you a little more edge if you're trying to clear terrain or get off the ground um, and then climb right away. You know, that's, that's going to be this is going to be the answer for that. Outstanding. Well, thanks for taking us up for a ride. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah.